Hi, welcome back. And today we're going to talk about flat earth and what the Bible has to say about it. But before we begin, let's open in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your word. And I thank you that we can actually go to your word for any topic that we encounter in life. And this this topic in particular has be, become controversial, especially in recent times. Before, maybe most people would not would have never considered this as a possibility. And now in recent times, people are questioning everything. And amazingly enough, your word has so much to say about this topic. And if you just give everybody uh, the ability to understand and and look at this topic with reason through your scriptures, they'll be able to see the truth plainly. And I pray that you would allow me to uh, speak forth your word the way it's presented in your in your word and and uh, guide us through this topic. And we will thank you. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Okay, so let's begin this topic and what the what the Bible says about flat earth. And first of all, why is this topic so important? A lot of you may be wondering why why the big deal i mean who cares if it's flat or round i mean there's so many things going on in this world why would you even worry whether it's flat or not well there is a lot of good reasons why uh this is an important topic and let me just start out by saying uh let's let's read second corinthians chapter 2 verse 11 which says lest satan should get an advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices there, the devil has many tactics. He has many things going on in this world. He's called the God of this world. And uh, he controls the financial system, the political system, the educational system, the healthcare system. He controls everything. And if he's in control of the educational system, you better believe that you, you, you need to reexamine everything that you've learned with the scripture because God... The Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar in Romans 3, 4. So we need we need to examine everything, even this topic of flat earth uh, with with the scripture. And let me just let me just also say uh, this. This lesson here is just going to be what the Bible says. Uh, now, there's a lot of good books. There's a lot of interesting uh, things and resources you can look at from the scientific end. But we are mainly looking at what the Bible says in this particular video. And and if you're a born again Christian, maybe you're a pastor, maybe you're a teacher, uh, you should, if you've never thought about this before, at least consider it. If you have always said, no, that's still not true. Well, re-examine with the scripture. And then when when the Bible, when, when you've examined it through the word, then you have to let your conscience be the guide through the Holy Spirit, what you decide to do and what you decide to believe in. The Bible says, first of all, in Romans 1.20, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. The God of this world is creating a, a an educational system, and he's even created a, a, a fake universe so that he can hide the true uh, magnificence of God. And by doing that, when you, uh, first of all, the Bible says you, all you have to do is examine what you could clearly see and you can understand God. There's no excuse. But if you grow up into an educational system, your eyes tell you one thing, your, your mind's like, no, it's got to be this way. But the educational system tells you another, then, then you don't have an excuse because God is in your conscience. He's in your heart and he's telling you, uh, what is true, what's not. The Bible says that Satan is called the God of this world. This is his system. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the, the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Satan is in the business of blinding people's minds. He's in the business of making you not understand What's really going on? He, if he can put create an entire system, educational, financial, religious, and make make it exclude God, the true identity of God, somehow, then his job is complete. He doesn't have to work very hard to keep you from to uh, coming to the saving knowledge and the gospel of Jesus Christ. His purpose is in fake science is to blind everyone from seeing the true God 
and to keep them from believing the gospel. It's that simple. And you know what? The Apostle Paul gave us an explicit warning about uh, science. And I'm not saying science is bad, but there's a there's a a science that's falsely so called. Paul said in Second Tim, or I'm sorry, First Timothy, chapter six, verse twenty. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding. Okay, you're supposed to avoid something, profane and vain babblings, and oppositions of science falsely so called. So uh, when you when you look at this verse, you need to ask yourself this. What, what is one thing that modern science has done to prove the existence of God? You go through any um, high, high school, middle school science book in the public school system, and you tell me one place where they're trying to prove the existence of God through their scientific theories. You, you show me, and that's an opposition of God. And Paul said that he warned of that. It's an opposition to, to avoid it. Uh, he... The devil is in charge of the educational system. I said that. Communications, transportation, financial, everything. So he is also behind every single news story. If he, The Bible says evil communications corrupt good manners. And the, the devil is really good at controlling communications between um, our level of, of existence and the throne of God. In between is the firmament uh, and then the, the space below. And he can interfere. He's the prince and power of the air. So he's controlling the air waves, the air, uh, the path that your prayers go between you and God. So he's he's in, in the business of trying to uh, infiltrate that and uh, keep you from communicating. And so if you follow only the news media and all the news stories, which if you haven't figured it out by now, that it's all a script that it's all every every single news story they have about three or four big stories that they they rotate and they add a new one then one of them eventually falls out and becomes old news but it's all it's always that way about three or four big stories every single day and it's a it's a narrative it's like a soap opera and it gets you baited and gets people all worked up and upset and uh, all of these negative emotions that's contrary to the holy spirit and then you can't Think about God. You, you're not going to see him as clearly. Uh, what you need to do is get into the word of God and study his word and use that as your measuring stick and then study everything else around the word of God. Uh, you have to trust God's word and he has plenty to say about this, about the uh, the earth. Uh, Isaiah is a good book. It's one of my favorite books and he knew basic geometry. Most of you are taught geometry um, at an earlier level, maybe third, fourth grade, maybe even earlier than that. And one of the basic things is the understanding of, of the difference between uh, a circle and a sphere. There's a difference. And Isaiah understood that. Uh, if, if Isaiah understood what God was telling him, he knew that the earth was not a ball. Uh, or he would have told us. The Bible says in Isaiah twenty two eighteen, and this is a one of the proof texts that many will try to say that the earth is, that they will use to say that the earth is a ball. The Bible says he he will surely in Isaiah twenty two eighteen he will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball. But who was he speaking to? He was speaking to Israel, and he was speaking about what he was getting ready to do to them. He wasn't speaking about the earth. He wasn't speaking about the shape of the earth. He just said, as a metaphor, I'm going to I'm gonna throw you like uh, I would throw a ball into a large country, okay? Because they were going to be dispersed. And there thou shalt die, and there the chariots of thy glory shall be the shame of thy Lord's house. So he understood, and that's not a reference to the earth in any way, shape, or form. That's in reference to a, a people. And he used a ball like a metaphor. Now, if he wanted to say that the earth was a ball, he could have used the same uh, same word in Isaiah 40, verse 22. Isaiah 40, 22 says, It is he, God, that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Now, the earth, that is, it is a circle. It's a flat circle uh, within, within our realm. And the Bible says, And the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretcheth out. Uh, stretcheth out the heavens uh, as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. Uh, we have the, the firmament. We have the glass uh, dome above the firmament. And 
inside is air and down below is a circle not a ball not a not a sphere it's a it's a circle uh, job 38 verse 13 and 14 says this that it may that it might take hold of the ends of the earth the earth has ends it it it's not a, a continual round ball. It has ends. It says that the wicked might be shaken out of it. It is turned as clay to the seal. And they stand like a garment. So you've got this flat, flat circle. And he takes this seal. And if you've ever seen like uh, where they make seals with wax and they press uh, a seal on top of that. And it makes an imprint. And that's exactly what he did with the earth. It's a flat circle. And it's turned up as clay when you put a seal on it. If, you, if you've ever be, played with Play-Doh or Silly Putty and you put like a cookie cutter on it and then you, you take it up and it, it has an imprint. And that's what exactly what he's saying. It's not a ball. It's, it's a seal. Uh, and it's also another verse that shows that the earth is flat. Is It's described as a footstool. In Isaiah 66 verse 1. The Bible says, Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me, and where is the place of my rest? The earth is a footstool. Uh, how many of you have seen footstools before? Are they a, a ball? No. They're usually flat with four legs, the, the four corners of the earth. Uh, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but there's a passage that talks about the four corners of the earth. And God is right above us. It mentions nothing about outer space. The heaven is right above the earth and the, the atmosphere, the air. God is right above us. And you know, uh, Jeremiah 23, verses 23 through 24 says, Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? He's not light years away. He's right above us. The Bible says, Can any any hide himself in secret places that I shall not find him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord. So he's right there. He's closer than what you realize. And if you understand the things that are, are clearly seen by the things that are made, you understand God is right there. With, we are without excuse. Our eyes tell us that the sun is right there in our atmosphere. And an opposition of science will tell you it's 93 million miles away and just one of any other uh, trillions of suns with their own solar systems and the galaxies uh, in the universe. And that's that's a lie. That That's nowhere mentioned in the Bible, anywhere. And uh, he, as a matter of fact, God says, I'm right here. I'm not far off. I'm not as, as far away as you think. And God is within viewing distance. In Psalm 33, verses 13 through 14, the Bible says, The Lord looketh from the heaven. Okay, so where he is, he's above the firmament. And he says, he beholdeth all the sons of men. From his place of habitation, he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. So if he is uh, on top of the circle of the earth, and he's right above, he can see everybody at, at one time. It's not like uh, if, it's a, if it's a ball, he's not going to be able to see the people under the earth. He's got everything laid out, plain in his sight, so he can see it all. It's flat. Um in Job 28, verse 24, the Bible says, For he looketh to the ends of the earth, and seeth under the whole, hev under the whole heaven. So he can see the ends. The, the earth, the circle has ends. Not underneath. You don't have ends on a ball. It's a, it's a, it's a flat circle. And a lot of you may be wondering, okay, what is our realm? What is our realm? And Genesis 1, verses 6 through 7 tells us. The Bible says, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Our, our sphere, our realm, our air, uh, is in the middle of a, a, a body of water called the sea, the great sea, the great deep. And we are in the middle of a bubble like a fishbowl. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, Let us told his disciples, I want to make you fishers of men. Because he came down into this fishbowl to fish us out, to get us out, to get our souls redeemed back unto him. Now, so he says, let us let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. So there was a span in between the waters and God made the firmament a firm, firm. 
a, a glass, a glass dome, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. So we are inside a glass, a glass bowl, a glass, uh, a, a glass where uh, God is is watching us like fish in a fish bowl. So we have waters above and waters below in our realm. The Bible says this in Psalm 136, verse 6. To him that stretcheth, stretched out the heaven above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. So there, um, up above us is a body of water, and up above that water is where God is, sits. He says he stretcheth out uh, to him that stretcheth the earth above the waters. Now, Psalm 148, verses 3 through 4, says, Praise ye him, uh, sun and moon, and praise him, all ye stars of light, which are fixed uh, fixtures in the, in the firmament. And it says, Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. There's water up above, and when you look up and you see the sky uh, blue, there's, you, you have to realize, and our eyes tell us, that that looks like water. There's something about that that makes you uh, know that there's water above. The Bible says about this water above in Jeremiah 10, verse 13, When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens. There's water up above. Those astronauts, when they train, they're trying to get it through that firmament, through, through that body of water up above. And that water, that, that body of water up above, when, when God opened the windows of heaven, he flooded out the earth in Noah's day and shut them. The Bible says that they were shut up later. And uh, because of those waters, these astronauts, nautical, uh, are training in water. Why? Because they're trying to get into the water up, up above. It says, when he, cry, when he utter, what uttereth his voice... There is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain, and he bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. If you just read the Bible and, and, and understand what God's trying to tell us, it's totally it's set up totally different than what science is trying to tell you. And they don't have pictures of it. It's all CGI anyway. So you, who are you going to believe? God's word, which is true, or pictures, cartoon pictures? And nobody's been there to take photos and show you what's real, what's not. Another thing about this earth is it doesn't move. It's not rotating around the sun. Nowhere in the Bible does it ever one time say that the earth is moving around the sun. The Bible doesn't say that he created the sun and then threw the earth in, in the middle in, in the six days and, and all of a sudden it started spinning around the sun. No, it didn't say anything. As a matter of fact, in 1 Chronicles 16, verse 30, the Bible says, Fear before him all, er, all the earth. The world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. You can't move the earth. It's not spinning. And you know, our mind tells us that we're not moving. We have an equilibrium in our mind that we can tell when we are on a plane or an elevator or an escalator or uh, even when you're in a skyscraper and you feel the... the the wind moving the, the top floors, you can feel that. But you don't feel that on, a, on an earth that's moving uh, thousands of miles per hour per second. No, you don't feel that at all because it's not. It's, it's unmovable. Uh, the sun is the, the thing that moves. The Bible says in Genesis 15 verse 12, And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, a great uh, an horror of great darkness fell upon him. It didn't say that as the earth was going around the sun, it says the sun was going down. In Ephesians 4.26, it says, Be ye angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. It doesn't say let, let not the earth go around the sun, nothing. The sun uh, can stop moving, which if, if the, the Bible's accurate, I believe it is. I, I believe it's the word of God and uh, every every word of it's true, then you can't have a solar system where the earth just stops around the sun or or it would totally mess up everything. But if you have a, a fixed earth, 
and you have a sun spinning around it, you could stop the sun easily. If God can do it, if he's controlling it, that's that's what he can do. You know, in uh, Isaiah 60, verse 20, uh, we have a couple things here. First of all, it says, Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself, for the Lord shall be thy everlasting light, and the days of thy mourning shall be ended. So, God's going to stop the sun in eternity. So if we're, we're just a spinning ball around this sun, then how's that going to work out in eternity? You you try to figure that out because it's science falsely so-called. But if you have a fixed uh, circle on the earth where God is looking down, he can be the light of the earth and not the sun. You won't need the sun anymore because God is light and in him is no darkness at all. The earth says nothing about the earth spinning around God. Uh, God is looking down. The Bible in many places says his face shall shine. Uh, so it's it's the sun that moves and the sun can stop. The Bible says in Job 9 verse 7, which commandeth the sun and it riseth not. The sun, he can stop it. God has a push button that can stop the sun and sealeth up the stars. There was a there was actually a day when the the sun stood still and the moon didn't it stayed as well. In the book of Joshua and I won't read the entire passage but you can read that in Joshua 10 verses 12 through 14 uh they were battling Joshua was fighting the Amorites and you know what God needed them to it was the battle's taking a lot longer and you know what jo, uh because God wanted to also use this as a sign to show Joshua, that he was with them, he actually stopped the sun for an entire day so they could continue fighting and not fight in the daylight or in without daylight. That would not happen with a revolving earth around the sun. That would everybody would be thrown off into space. Uh, and also, the sun, if God really wants to, he can make it go backwards. Did you know that? In, in 2 Kings 20. Verses 8 through 11, Hezekiah wanted proof. He wanted uh, validation for his request for healing. And uh, remember, God healed him, added to him an extra 15 years. And one of the signs was that he would make the sundial, the, the shadow of the sundial, go backwards 10 degrees. Imagine that. For that to happen, God would have to make the sun go backward. Look at uh, 2 Kings 20, verse uh uh, it would be verse 11. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow ten degrees backward, by which it had gone down in the di dial of Ahaz. So the sundial that they had, called Ahaz and Ahaz, he made it go back ten degrees. For that, the sun would have to go backward. Now, more about the earth. It's a solid sphere, or I'm sorry, it's a solid circle. It's not a sphere. And it's also set upon pillars, like a footstool. If the earth is his footstool, it's set on four legs. Well, the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8, He raiseth the poor out of the dust and lift, lifted up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he set the world upon them. The world is set on pillars. It's not set... Just a, a, a ball floating in space. It, it's set on a solid pillar. Four uh, pillars. The Bible says in Isaiah 48 verse 13. Mine hand also hath laid the foundations of the earth. And my right hand hath spanned the heavens. When I call unto them, they stand up together. They stand up together, the heavens. And, um, and if you go through my Revelation series, you... You will understand that I, I show that stars and angels are synonymous with each other. So they stand up when he calls unto them. But the, the part that I was trying to get at was he laid the foundations, foundation, I'm sorry, of the earth and set them on the pillars. Uh, did you know um, he set the Arctic Circle and he set that um, as a barrier, as a wall? Uh, I got this picture. I don't know if you can see it very well. Kind of made a, a copy of that, and we're gonna. I'll show this a couple of times, but imagine an Arctic wall, uh, like a circle, the circle of the Earth, 
and then the nations and we'll, I'm, I've got a good verse a good proof text verse on uh, the flat earth and this just being a, a small part of the realm but he put an arctic circle around the earth around the waters to keep them from falling off the sides in Job 26 verse 10 he said it says he compassed the waters with bounds until the day and night come to an end so you've got boundary walls boundary walls around the ocean you're not going to sail uh through the ocean and fall off i mean they make fun of the flat earth concept many you see that if you look up flat earth pictures uh, and you try to google it and they'll show like a like a plate with water flowing off and and make it look and sound ridiculous but no it's like it's a container we are our nations and the, the body of water is in a container, a, a circle. And there's a solid glass. Uh, there's also a solid glass firmament between the atmosphere and the waters above, like a fish tank, an aquarium. That's basically what we are, we are in. And uh, in Job 37, verse 18, the Bible says about this firmament, about this glass firmament, has to Thou with him spread out the sky. People trying to pretend that they're God and that they can do the same things God did. And he, he says, okay, has, have you spread out, uh, ha, were you with him when he spread out the sky, which is strong and as a molten looking glass, molten glass, it's a glass. First uh, Corinthians 13, 12 about this glass. It says, for now we see through a glass darkly, darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall uh, know even as I am known. When you look up at night, you're seeing the dark sky and you're looking at a glass darkly. But when Jesus Christ returns and he takes the veil back, you're going to see him face to face. And uh, for a believer, that's going to be a blessed thing. But for the, um, those unbelievers that will be going through the tribulation period, they're going to be asking the rocks to fall upon them to hide them from the face of God. And uh, that would only happen on a flat earth. Uh, people underneath the earth aren't going to, if God was on top of the globe, uh, the people underneath aren't going to see him. So it doesn't work. That model does not work with the Bible. The Bible says about this glass firmament in Ezekiel uh, verses one, uh, 4 through 5 and verses 22. Ezekiel had looked up, he saw... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the whirlwind come down and he saw the likeness of the four living creatures. And then in verse 22, it says, and the likeness of the firmament upon their heads. Uh, they're standing up in the middle of the atmosphere, lo these large uh, supernatural beings. And he could see when they were lit up the firmament upon their heads. And of the living creature was the color of terrible crystal, crystal crystal glass and it was stretched forth over their heads above the bible the bible lays this out really plain it's it's really plain to understand you have to make a choice do i want to believe a science that's trying to disprove god to show that god is so far away that he doesn't really care about you as a matter of fact there's probably other worlds with other people evolving and and other solar systems and planets and there's probably other greater technologies out there that and we're worthless probably our technology is probably uh, inferior to everyone else's and that's what they're trying to teach people that's all fantasy that's not reality and the truth is we are unique and God created us to observe us us only and he created everything uh, to praise and glorify him and his throne is right above us and he's past this firmament which is above our heads the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord. We're looking, we're looking for God, which are the things that we understand Him by the things that are clearly seen. We can understand uh, the, the glory of God that we are without excuse. We are uh, with an open face, beholding, uh, looking up as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. When the Lord says, He tells us that one day we will shine as lights, we will be as, as the star, shine as the stars of heaven. And, 
And we can clearly understand that by the things that he made. We're going to be right there with him in glory. Revelation 4, verse 6, talks about this glass again. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, the terrible crystal that Ezekiel saw. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. So there's a sea of glass and it's hid like a stone. Um, we can't really see it because he's, he's hidden himself. And this glass is like a stone that keeps a, as a barrier wall between us and him because of sin. The Bible says in Job 38 verse 30, the waters, the waters up above are, are hid as with a stone. And the face of the deep is frozen at the very top. The face is frozen, the sea of glass. Okay? Uh, Job 9, verse 8. There's plenty in the Bible about this. There's no excuse, really. It's kind of shameful that we didn't get this sooner and that our eyes were not open sooner uh, to really see this and that we don't have preachers and pastors and teachers that are willing to humble themselves, swallow their pride, admit that they were wrong, and just believe God's word. It's so plain. It's, it, it's, I'm not here to ridicule anybody that doesn't or hasn't seen it yet, that's not on board with this, but it's really clear. You have to make up all kinds of fantasy stories to believe otherwise uh, and follow the God of this world's science to, to believe anything else than what the Bible is plainly telling us. Job 9 verse 8 which alone spreadeth out the heavens and treadeth upon the waves of the sea, upon the deep that's up of the waters up above. The Bible says this in Psalm 150, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Uh, so the, the, the firmament is where he is, right up above us, and that's where he is. That's his glory, is right above. We see through a glass darkly. Right now, it's hard to really comprehend that, but we will see him face to face again when he lifts that veil. Now, another thing that the Bible makes clear is that the land in this circle is spread out. It's not uh, underneath. It's not uh, uh, curved in a, in a ball. It's spread out. The Bible says in Isaiah 44, verse 24, Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, and spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. He spread it abroad. Okay, in simple terms, he didn't spread it, you can't say abroad like that. It, he spread it abroad, flat. Uh, Isaiah 40, verse 15. This is where um, I'll use my photo again, or my picture. The Bible says, Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket. A bucket. He didn't say the nations are on an, as a drop on top of a ball. He said the nations are as a drop in the bucket. And when he said the nations, the known nations are as a drop, that kind of implies that they're there's other things. Maybe the realm is even greater than what we can imagine. And he says, And they are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. He, he picks up our circle as in a bucket. And he calls these uh, continents isles. There is a little, to God, that's just a little thing. Nations are as a drop in a bucket, not a ball. That is... For me, when God showed me that passage, that was one of the greatest uh, proofs for me that we live on, on a flat realm. Because uh, it was it just as a testimony. Before this, I, I may have been like a lot of you. I didn't believe this. I liked the idea of ancient aliens. And uh, I love the idea of outer space and NASA and the moon landings. And I was like, oh, I can't wait. I was... But I really believe the, the photos from Mars, and I was just always into that. It was really exciting to think that there's more out there. But I needed proof, and when I went to prove that this Earth is not flat, and I needed proof, and actually I just started doing research, and what I ended up doing was finding it was complete. It was the complete opposite of what I really thought I understood, and I was so ashamed that I didn't see it before. And I needed a proof text. 
And one of the proof verses, and this stood out to me when I was reading Isaiah, was that the nations are as a drop in a bucket. And he made sure to, and, and a bucket has a circle, circle top, the circle of the earth. And that's all I needed. And you have an ice wall around like a bucket. And that was the greatest proof text for me. And maybe this is the first time you've actually came across this passage. I hope I hope you are opening your eyes to see the Bible uh, has so much to say about this. Um, now another another um, verse for spreading out the earth. The Bible says in Isaiah forty five forty two verse five, "Thus saith God the Lord: He created the heavens and stretched them out. He that spread forth the earth, they spread it out." Isaiah 52, verse 10, the Bible says, Behold, hath, uh, the Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of the Lord. So when the Lord uh, brings judgment upon this fear, he's going to uh, unveil his holy arm, and everybody's going to see him at one time. It, and the people, if it was a ball, they wouldn't be able to see him underneath. So that's how big our realm is. Uh, it, our realm is very big, bigger than what probably they're telling us. Now, uh, I know there's a lot of speculation that there's other continents. And Admiral Byrd actually talked about there's plenty of unexplored lands out there. And then uh, mysteriously he dies. They try to keep him quiet and make him sound like a quack. But uh, the earth, there's a plenty out there. Job 38 verses 4 through 5, it says... Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth, if thou hast understanding? Who hath laid the measures of it, if thou knowest, or who hath stretched the line upon it? Two big things in this passage. First of all, how could you, he says, how are you, who, who has ever been able to measure it? Now, on the scientific, what they try to show us um, and teach us in school is they have it all measured out and they have everything mapped out on Google Maps which is CGI as well. If you haven't seen, if you think that's not manipulated, then you're not looking, you're not thinking. But uh, he, he lay, there, there's nobody that would be able to measure it. First of all, that's what God says. And first of all, who has stretched the line upon it? Have you ever uh, hung clothes up on a, on a wire and you had to stretch it from one pole to the other? Or if you hung up some, some clothes in your shower to dry and you hung up something... Uh, it's not curved. A stretched out line is not curved. He said he has stretched the line upon it. You stretch a line upon a flat earth, not a globe. That's another another good proof. And that's in Jeremiah 31, 37. Water, first of all, does not bend. That's another thing. Um, you, If you've ever been out in the ocean, been on a cruise, cruise ships are so so exciting. It's, it's great to be on the water. If, if you get a chance, uh, do it. Because you stand on the very top, uh, as, as high as you can get on the ship, and you stand and you look around, you, you, you can clearly see that it's a circle. There's no curvature anywhere. Your eyes aren't deceiving you. There's no curvature. The water does not bend. It's straight. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in Job 37, verse 10, By the breath of God, frost is given, and the breath of the waters is curved. Is that what he says? No. It says, and the breadth of the waters is straightened. It's flat. It's not curved. In Job 37, 10, it tells you that the waters are straightened. It's not curved. And the earth has, has ends and corners. In Job 9, verse 10, the Bible says, And I will cut off the chariot of Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the heathen, and his domain shall be from sea even to sea, and from river even to the ends of the earth. The, the earth has ends. Not, it's not round corners. End. Isaiah 11, verse 12. How many corners are there? Well, the Bible will tell you. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, in Isaiah eleven twelve, 12, and shall assemble the outcast of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah, from the four corners of the earth, four corners. Not, it's not a sphere. It's not, it's not round. 
There's a circle on top of a, a, a base that has four corners and pillars, like a footstool, like the Bible tells us. Now, one more thing. What, if you need one more proof that the earth is, is flat and not, not a, uh, a, a sphere, Revelation, Revelation 21, verses 15 through 17, talks about the new Jerusalem that comes down out of heaven. Okay, so if it's if it's uh, like a mini earth and coming down and and God wants it to look like the moon and the sun uh, and it has a balance with all the nature that science shows you all around planets. And and we're going to do a part two to this as well. This is just part one for the flat earth. We'll get into more. I got plenty more verses, but I I just want to make this video um, kind of an overview for today. But he would make New Jerusalem uh, a ball, right? That's not what the Bible says. Look, in Revelation 21, verse 15, it says, And he talked with me that had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof and the city that lieth four square. It's, it's, a, it's a shape of a cube, not a ball. It's flat and it has sides, it has corners like the earth. The Bible says in verse 16, And, and the city lieth four square. And the length is as large as the, as the breadth. And he measured the city with a reed, 12,000 furlongs. And the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. It's an equal cube. And he measured the wall thereof, 144 cubits, according to the measure of man, that is, of the angel. So, there you go. Uh, New Jerusalem is a cube. That's going to look ridiculous if it's supposed to match all the planets, the stars, the circle, sphere, uh, sp- the sphere, the, the sun, and the, the moon, and then you got this this square uh, city that's up above. It's going to look ridiculous, and scientists are not going to like that. But God's showing you that natural, the cl- things that are uh, uh, invisible are clearly seen by the things that are made, and he showed you that New Jerusalem is a cube, not a, not a ball. So my final verse is in Psalm 119, verse 16. The Bible says, Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. God's word is true, and it's not going to lie to you. God's not going to give you false truth. And if if you line up the scripture with the flat earth teaching, everything, everything lines up. There's no contradictions. Nothing is out of the ordinary. And actually, it's going to show how foolish... Uh, science is and how much they've been lying to us probably to make money for sure to have a justify all the the billions that they've taken away from us in the space programs and to keep us distracted thinking that they're going to find something out there that has not been shown to us through the word of god or something that cannot be clearly seen by the things that are made uh and it, it got satan is trying to hide god from us so he's created a a, a total fantasy for us to believe in. And, and many many professing Christians, pastors, Bible teachers uh, have not had their eyes open to see. And they're still believing that. And probably, unfortunately, it, it, many will fear persecution and ridicule. And that's another reason why they just go along and they say, why is it important whether it's a, a flat or a ball? But if you, if you want the truth and you want to go along with God... Uh, And once you know the truth, the Bible says to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is a sin. So if God's revealed this truth to you and you continue to want to believe the lie, then then you're accountable for that. So I hope that today you have a better understanding of what God's word says on this topic and that there's plenty to say. Again, this is part one and we're going to get into the cosmology, uh, biblical cosmology of the, the universe uh, in part two, and that will be later on. We're going to do um, a lesson on prayer. I think that's important. And then we're going to do the book of Daniel. We're going to go verse by verse like we did Revelation. But I really want to take time out to do this on the flat earth because this is important. Um, once you know that Satan's been lying to you, why wouldn't you be upset to know that everybody's lying to you and that you're okay with being lied to? That's not right. Uh, we should stand for truth. The Bible says, sanctify them through, the, through truth. Thy word is truth, John 17, 17. So I hope you get a, your eyes open today. And if anything, I hope it's opened up your awareness to at least question. Maybe I, maybe there, if you still think I'm wrong, just question it. 
and do research. You'll see. I'm confident that you'll come up with the same conclusion. Well, anyways, that's it for this lesson, and uh, thank you for watching. Let's close in a word of prayer right now. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the truth of your word. Thank you for laying it out so perfect that there's no way that we can uh, misunderstand it. You want us to know that this is the way things are. So I thank you for showing us today and giving us enlightenment on this topic. And we praise you for it's in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Well, thanks again for watching this video. And I hope you've been encouraged today. Uh, hope you have a wonderful day and God bless you. Take care.